But Shabbos, everything changed. Close to Shabbos, my husband would come very strong. He had all his energy. And the house would miraculously become bigger and wider in space. It, every, everything would, you know, become beautiful. And we would have guests who would come before Shabbos, very holy looking guests who would come with the Sefer Torah. Hey everybody, welcome to another Malava Malka story. Um, I just want to make a disclaimer. This video is, uh, this story is a story that I've told before on this channel, but I repeated it because it was relevant at the time, which was about a week and a half ago. And because I believe that the, um, in, my, in my opinion, the, the, Previous time I said the story, there was a lot of distractions, and I just felt didn't do it justice. So, in my opinion, this is a much better version of that. So, uh, enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good luck, everybody. Um, because we just had the, uh, the yard site of the Arizal, and we are, uh, it's right before Tisha B'Av also, which is, uh, as we know, Beis Mikish was destroyed, but also it's the birthday of. Shiach. So, I want to say a story of the Arizal that, uh, that it involves Mashiach, a very, very special story. And uh, here it goes. So, when the Arizal started, when he came to Tzfas, in the city that we're in right now, in a very beautiful, special shul, the, uh, the artist quarter minion. So, thank you, Rabzalman, by the way. So, the, when the Arizal started doing what he was doing, there were a lot of rumors of miracles and, uh, you know, wonders that he was doing, and it got to the ears of the Maharshal. The Maharshal was a very big Torah figure. He was the Rav and the Av Beistin in the city of Lublin. And he, uh, until today, his, his uh, Chidushim, his Torah, his teachings are, are learned. And he actually, his last name was also Luria. The, he was related to the Arizal, uh -huh. probably his great uncle, but he heard that, that Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, the Arizal, was doing this stuff, and he suspected maybe he's doing sorcery, which is absolutely usher and, and pure. He didn't, he was, you know, he hears miracles, and he's very skeptical. You know, some, some, uh, he thinks some, uh, a trickster, yeah, a grifter is, is, uh, is uh, hanging, hanging out in Tzfas and, and uh, tricking people. And he was about to declare a ban, a, a cherem, on the Arizal. And the Arizal gets wind of the Arizal hears about this. And right away he realizes he has to prevent this. Because if someone as great as the Marshal makes a cherem against the Arizal, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a problem. So he sends two, two, of, his greatest, uh, two of his greatest students by the name of Reb Chaim Vital. You know, Reb Chaim Vital is one of the greatest Kabbalists. And Reb Yisrael Sarok, both people who ended up going to different parts of the world to spread Kabbalah, the, 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 the secrets of Torah, teachings of uh, the secrets of the Torah. He sent them, and he said, you have to go to him. And he said, as a reward for you doing this, as a, as a payment, I'm going to reveal to you who the Mashiach of this generation is. Every generation has its Mashiach, the Mashiach of David, and I'm going to reveal to you who he is. His name is Eliakim ben Shmuel, and he lives in the town of Tisovich. I hope I said that the name of that town right. So, um, and so they, they go on their way and they, they packed with them uh, hot food uh, as they're, fr you know, from Tzfas. And they go outside and a cloud comes, right? Talking about the Arizal and miracles, a cloud comes and picks them up and takes them to Lublin in a record time. And they are dropped off right in front of the shul of uh, the Marshal. Now, the second that these people come into the shul, you can imagine the commotion, these people who look like holy people, because they were holy people, and they're wearing the, the, the garb in Tzfas, which is very different than the garb in Lublin. So these people look like otherworldly holy beings, and it makes a big commotion. And due to something that happened in the shul, which is a story on its own, the Maharshal already knew that these people were holy people. It's a, it's a, it's a different story, it's a long story on its own. Uh, but... Uh, he, he 
So they introduced themselves and said why they were there. And the Marshal says, okay, I want you to tell me something from the Arizal. He wanted to hear some terror, right? How, how, how is he going to know for sure if this is okay? Tell me what the Arizal has to say. So they say, we, we, we can tell you, but we can't tell you over here because of, you know, eavesdropping uh, it has to be 100% away from any uh, listening ears. So they go to a, a, the Marshal's basement, which was dark. And the second they start to say the words of Torah of the Arizal, the room lights up. And they, they finish what they're saying. And after they were done, the Arizal, the Marshal, changed his mind and he said, I'm not going to declare a cherem. And uh, they, they had you know, obviously understood who, who, who Rabbi Tzachak was. He understood who, who the Arizal was. And he said, not only am I not going to declare a cherem, a ban, but I'm going to actually, uh, I'm, I'm now one of his followers. You know, I mean, he, he was a real believer. So uh, they accomplished their mission. So now they decided now it's time to go to Tisovich to meet Mashiach, to meet this rebel Yakim. So they start going and they reach Tisovich and they start asking about Nel Yakim. And nobody knows who this guy is. They go even to the most uh, informed elders and the most important people of the, of the town. Nobody knows who he is. They go to the Rav of the city and they ask the Rav of the city, do you know who this Nel Yakim is? And he says he doesn't know. And they, these people are so desperate to meet the, the Mashiach of the generation that they, they feel that they have no choice. They have to tell the Rav what they, why they're actually looking for him. They say, listen, we're here from the Arizal. And the Arizal told us that he's Mashiach and we want to we wanna, we wanna meet him. And the second the Rabbi hears this, he really starts to go full swing and trying to find this out. And with a lot of effort and with a lot of people involved, they finally track this guy down. And, but the Rav said... Uh, now that I know about this, I'm coming with. And, you know, they couldn't really dissuade him. And so the three of them go and they find his little tiny house. They walk inside and it's decrepit and the, 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 the chairs and the table and the beds are broken. And they see Erbil Yakim himself lying down in, the, in his bed. His wife is by the stove. And... Um, they're very, very happy to have guests. They're very surprised by these guests. And the two students, uh, Reb Chaim Vital and Reb Yisrael Shog, say, we're here from the Arizal. He told us that you're the Mashiach of the generation. And right away, Reb Yachim says, the Arizal and his revelations, because he revealed to you who I am, it's going to cause uh, a lot of trouble, and I'm, I'm going to have to leave this world. Yeah, right? Uh, I, the Mashiach of the generation is going to have to be nifter. Uh, some opinions say that if the Rav wouldn't have been there, it would have been okay. Because at the end of the day, Arizal said they should go. So, but that's a side point. So he said, my soul has to leave my body now. And I want you to personally take care of the burial. And pre please write on the uh, Matseva, on the headstone, here lies a truthful and honest man. A truthful and honest man? Yeah, that's it. Truthful and honest man. Simple but virtuous. And um, that's what happened. He passed away. They took care of it. And once they took care of the burial, uh, they went to speak to the, the Rebbe Yakim's widow now, right now his widowed wife. And they wanted you know, to, to comfort her and to, and to ask her about who her husband was. So she said, when we got married, we, uh, the, my whole life was exactly what you saw. My husband was very sickly. He was always in bed. And I had to take care of everything. I had to take care of, you know, the food. And, and, and she took care of all the, the financial. The financials, obviously, they didn't live very, uh, you know, they didn't have a very uh, lavish, lifestyle. lavish lifestyle. But Shabbos, everything changed. Close to Shabbos, my husband would get, become very strong. He had all his energy. And the house would miraculously become bigger and wider in space. It, every, everything would, you know, become beautiful. And we would have guests who would come before Shabbos, very holy-looking guests who would come with the Sefer Torah. And uh, the whole Shabbos they would spend just learning, davening, and, and, and uh, you know, in really, really holy activities. And then the second Shabbos is over, right after Havdah, the guests would disappear, the house would go back to exactly how it was, and that's how we lived our life. So they asked this lady, the, the, the you know, Rebbe Yochim's wife, 
this is normal to you? Like you didn't tell anybody before about this phenomena? This is a crazy miracle. So she said, she's a very simple woman, and she said, I don't know. I, I, I know that every, uh, I know that a husband and a wife are considered a king and a queen. So I thought in every Jewish home, after marriage, this is what happens every single Shabbos. That was her assumption. And uh, that's the end of the story. You know, a beautiful, beautiful story. And we just, you know, we just passed the, uh, the yard site of the Arizal. And Tisha B'Av is around the corner. But we're hoping that we'll be able to wish each other a freilich and Tisha B'Av, a happy Tisha B'Av. Amen. We'll be with Mashiach. Amen. And uh, may we all experience that now. And uh, only, only good and happiness. Good everybody. Mashiach de Kavach. Amen.